Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. Now, while some of us would like to think we can talk to our cats, <laughs> I'm one of them. The reality <laughs> is that these mysterious little creatures have a very specific way of communication. Yeah, and look, we do get <laughs> to know them and they get to know us, but I think it makes it even more important to be in tune with their behavior in order to notice any of those small signs or possibly symptoms that they could be falling ill. And uh, being a cat daddy, I had the opportunity to sit down with a phenomenal vet to get some much needed advice for, I think, all of us cat mommies and daddies out there. <laughs> We are back at the Animal Hospital and Vet Shop in Belleville, where they really do work on the front lines of pet health care. And today I'm going to be continuing my own education with the incredible Dr. Stephen Smith. We're going to be dealing with gastric issues that affect our feline friends today. And as the owner of a beautiful cat, I know this really does matter. So hopefully we're going to arm ourselves with some of those early warning signs. Doc, how are you? Very well, thanks, Andrew. Um, thank you once again for joining us for a very important discussion. Um, I think it was a real eye-opener when we connected about gastric issues for dogs. Now we're taking a feline turn and looking at our other fur babies, and I'm, I'm kind of a, a parent of both, and I think this is, again, something that affects a lot of pets out there, especially cats. I've got to start though with cats and having owned them for most of my life, hairballs are a pretty common thing, or at least I've seen them, especially with the long-haired uh, breeds. How worried should we be and how common is the, the hairball problem? I think that a lot of cats will do it normally at a, a, a low grade, so occasionally. You don't want it too often, but certainly in a longer-haired cat that's going through molting, you, you will probably see it more at that point. Uh, but it can be a sign of something else as well. For example, uh, an allergic cat that's over-grooming will obviously be uh, swallowing more fur or hair than normal. And then, potentially, if you have a, a cat that vomits for another reason, you may find fur in the vomit, but it's not actually the reason for it. There's an under another reason for the vomiting. We joke about our cats being more mysterious than dogs, sometimes even just a little bit aloof, but it can make it a bit tricky when establishing if something is wrong because they are a little reclusive in that sense. So what are those warning signs that something is potentially wrong? Uh, cats are actually unique in that, unlike dogs, they will not eat things that they uh, shouldn't. <laughs> They're actually very good with that and, and um, they will vomit up quite quickly if they're taking a toxin or something like that. So um, vomiting cats is, is quite a, a common sign of gastrointestinal disease. So it, it's not that difficult to, to pick that up. Uh, you will see little patches of vomit in the carpet uh, or you may see or hear them doing it. Uh, it depends on the cause, uh, of course. If you have um, a chronic intestinal problem, you may well have more a diarrhea than, than um, a vomiting. And that can be difficult because cats are secretive. So they may be going to the toilet outside and you may have no clue that it's ongoing unless they do something in the bathroom or what, and you, all of a sudden you say, oh, something's going on here. Not that we want to go to the dark side, but this can lead to pretty dire consequences. Or how extreme can those consequences be if left unchecked? So that, that'll depend on the cause. Uh, you know, so for a cat that, for example, has a, a food-associated allergy, uh, a, a hypersensitivity to an ingredient, that's not such a serious problem. Uh, it can cause weight loss over time, but uh, but that's not so serious. But the more serious things are things like um, an intestinal lymphoma, which is actually cancer in the intestinal wall, which is not uncommon common in the older cat. And then of course if vomiting is a sign of another disease, for example uh, when they have an overactive thyroid, one of the signs can be that they've got weight loss and they vomit as well. So that can be quite a serious disease as well because they start to waste away um, and, and then obviously we need, to, we need to treat that fairly drastically. So how do we approach treatment? So it depends uh, on, on what the cause is again. If we have uh, a viral condition, for example, then we will use a gastrointestinal formula, uh, which is a highly digestible food uh, that's quite light on the intestine so that the intestine can heal. If we have a food-associated allergy, um, you know, then, then we'll use a hypoallergenic diet where they actually specifically use ingredients that are not causing allergies in, in the cat intestine. Um, and, and so that, that can be um, quite an easy thing to treat if you just find the right food for them. Doc, as always, thank you so much. Very enlightening. And I love the fact that you can take some control, but you do need a partnership with your vet. And that's the bottom line. You know your pets better than anyone else. Even with a very mysterious pet like a cat, you will still see changes in their behavior. And if anything is ringing that alarm bell in your head, don't waste any time. Get your pet to a vet. 
Oh, massive thank you to Dr. Smith, the incredible team of vets working with Royal Cannon on this pet health series. I've absolutely loved it. As a pet parent, both dog and cat, I love the fact that these uh, are, are, bits of information are giving us an opportunity to be empowered, but also to enrich that beautiful relationship we have with our four-legged friends. So here's to wishing you and yours a happy, healthy journey from here on out. Royal Cannon, making a better world for pets through precise and tailored health through nutrition.